everyone, the Challenger Summer 2 Finals are just about to begin, but before the action gets started, I'm here with Gamut's analyst, Dimitri, whose squad could be facing off one of these teams setting up on the stage right now in the Spring Promotion Tournament. Welcome again, always a pleasure to talk to you, Dimitri, and it's going well for the team, 2 on one so far. What has been the biggest improvement you've seen on the rift from your guys here? Yeah, hello, like, yeah, really everyone noticed some improvements. I guess it's uh, all about that we get some team synergy because, uh, well, no one expect uh, that with all the roster changes we can get the team synergy immediately. So it's just uh, high time we can finally get it. And it seems like you found it. And when I was talking to Nick earlier, I asked, you know, what did change? And he said, it seems that people are listening more to the other people in our team, like our analyst. And how much have you felt that change? And how does it change the way you work with the players? Um, well, yes, I guess, uh, uh, like our players uh, listen much more to each other and uh, to me. Uh, moreover, Groove came to us this week. so. I guess he influenced a lot on our performance. Um, but like uh, for me personally, uh, this game doesn't mat matter that much because uh, I'm thinking about uh, the relegation games where we shall just stand calm and filled and uh, united uh, in this time of trial. And uh, the task uh, will be hard. There may be dark days ahead, um, um, but we, yeah, but we should prepare ourselves and reverently commit our cause to God. And if one and all, uh, we keep uh, resolutely faithful to it, then with uh, God's help, we shall prevail. You guys, are, you, Kappa, you guys are standing together for sure in this one already. So obviously SK Prime and NIP are, are setting up here on stage. How close of an eye have you been watching Challenger? I think a very close eye. And what has been your impressions of the strongest team then and maybe even which teams you certainly want to avoid? Yeah, I watched a lot of Challenger scene. Um, and uh, like actually, uh, there will be playoff uh, tournament between uh, all the challenger teams and uh, right now it's hard to predict who will represent challengers in at the relegation matches since uh, some of the underdogs of challengers scene, for example unicorns of love they considerably change their roster and uh, they might beat even the teams who are favorites now, like uh, NIP and H2K, since uh, H2K changed uh, their roster as far as I know, maybe, or they just having some issues. And like regarding the SK Prime and NIP match, I think it's still in favor of NIP. All right, so NIP regard as the strongest by you. Thank you very much, Dimitri. You're welcome. All right, we're nearly ready for our first match in the series, so let's send it over to Joe and the Fischio. Thank you very much, Shox, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe Miller, along with Martin de Fischio Lunger. Now, we've seen a lot of LCS action happen on this stage today, but the European Challenger Series finals are just beginning, thanks in part to our friends at Coca-Cola. And today's final, a best of three for the Summer Series 2 title between Ninjas in Pajamas and SK Gaming Prime. And before we get into it, let's just have a look at the path these teams took to get here today. Indeed. So SK Prime went 6-1 and one overall during the Summer 2 tournament, and that single loss was to the reigning Summer 1 champions, H2K Gaming. However, they looked impressive in the semi-final series where they got revenge against H2K for marring that perfect record. And Ninjas in Pajamas, they began the Summer 2 as the second seed. They lost to H2K Gaming in the Summer 1 Finals in London, where they were lacking Alex Ish and didn't really seem like they were on the same page in that match. Now, since Alex has rejoined the team and switched back to the mid lane, they are perfect 4-0, sweeping Unicorns of Love and Ocelot's Gamers too. And in the Challenger Series, victories come with points. At the end of this match, the top six teams will have qualified for the Summer Playoffs. 
All of the teams are actually set in stone. We're just waiting for this game, this final, to see exactly where they're going to be in the seats. Yeah, so Ninjas in Pajamas and H2K Gaming, they hold first and second place. And if SK Gaming Prime wins today, they will force a tiebreaker for the third place against Gamers 2. After that, it's Reason Gaming in fifth place and Unicorns of Love who earned the sixth and final spot by winning their tiebreaker match against playing Ducks earlier today. Now let's head into today's final with the Ninjas in Pajamas taking on SK Gaming Prime. Ninjas in Pajamas have revamped their roster since we last saw them on an LCS stage during the Summer 1 finals. And as we wait for the picks and bans, let's take you through the team. In the top lane for NIP, we have Cabo Shard. Now, he's a big Gragas fan who we remember from his time as a substitute for Gambit during the LCS trip to London. And in the jungle, we have Ko. He played last year on Cloud9 Eclipse, but he was too young to actually get into the LCS. He's widely considered one of the best or one of the most impressive young talents we have here in Europe. And of course, in the mid lane, the man who needs the smallest of introductions here is former legendary mid laner of Gambit Gaming, Alex Itch. He was recently, of course, playing top lane for NIP, but seems to have made the team a lot stronger by moving back to his normal mid lane role. As AD Carry, we have Freeze, my former lane partner who I played in the LCS under the Ninjas in Pajamas banner with in the 2013 Summer Split. He has been a very key part in carrying NIP into today's final, and I expect some great games from him. And of course, in the support role, it's Voidal, the final player on the roster. He's no stranger to these big stages. During his stint as Gambit support in Season 3, he accompanied the team to Worlds. Yeah, so Alex clearly had some impact on the team here. I got Voidal to join as well. And he's actually been looking good together with Freeze down this bottom lane here. On the red side, we do have SK Gaming Prime, who were actually known as Broken Shards team until he joined the Copenhagen Wolves two weeks ago. But they haven't skipped a beat with their very new lineup here. Top lane, we do have Smitty, a very versatile top laner. And we have seen him play both HP top laners, but, we also oh, he, but he also pulled out Riven in the semi-final versus H2K. He has favorite Rise, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some double AP coming out here from SK Gaming Prime. And in the jungle is Kikis. He replaced Broken Shard and has been showing some impressive moves coming out of the jungle. He plays very aggressively and puts a lot of focus on ganking champions like Jarvan, or even Rengar is busted out in the past. He's also got a wealth of experience after finishing second at the World Cyber Games with Meet Your Makers all the way back in 2011. Yeah, that is a long time ago here. In the mid lane, we have What The Fox, the playmaker and star player on the team, if you ask a lot of the people around the Challenger scene. We have seen some very impressive performances from him in the playoffs, and it's not uncommon to see at least two mid lane bans against him. And in the AD carry role, we have Ziz, who's formerly known as Heydal. Ziz is an experienced player, he's been around forever. He's tried to qualify for the LCS twice, first on Millennium, later on the Super Hot Crew, and he's a strong AD carry, and he's currently leading the Coke series in terms of kills, with 37 of them in six games. And on support, we have Zaitan. He leads the Coast Coke series two simply in terms of assists and has been very <laughs> has been a very solid support throughout the tournament. He's a very consistent player, but he's not exactly the type to make the big plays on his own. Well, now that we've introduced them to you, let's see what the players themselves have to say about fa uh, facing each other in the finals. Well, I was expecting to play against uh, H2K. But uh, SK Prime defeated them in the last semi-finals. Our performance was really good and I think it's going to be as good as today. You should never underestimate a team like SK Prime. I think with the addition of the new jungler, Kikis, they really like filled the gaps in the team that they got. I think uh, Alex is, is past his prime. I think What the Fox is a uh, much better player than him. I'm really confident going against any mid laner. I know they're... AD carries is. He loves to play Ezreal, but I don't think Ezreal is good in the meta, so let's see what he brings out for the finals. They used to call me a uh, one-trick pony Lucian. We can't play it right now on this patch, so I play most likely Ezreal every game. It's a bit of a deja vu right now. Uh, I've been here so many times in the same situation over and over again, and I really feel like uh, beating the deja vu this time. Some very strong words there. Yeah. Alex H is past his prime. Oof. Agree, disagree. 
completely disagree. The games I've watched from NIP, he's really, really good. He's not the only carry on the team. They have Freeze, who's doing really well. They have yeah. Boo in the jungle as well. So there's a lot of uh, carry options. A bit like if you look at Alliance, where Froggen is a great player, but everyone around him is great players too here. So past his prime, I disagree. But uh, what the Fox is known as a great mid laner. Let's see if he can actually kill Alex in the one on one. We'll have to find out. But before we head into Champion Select, let's see how you guys predict this match will play out. According to the votes, you believe NIP will win this best of three by a whopping 82%. So I will say they are the favorites, but 82% uh, is too much in my opinion. SK Gaming Prime has looked very good in the challenger scene here. They beat H2K 2-1, the team who actually beat NIP last time where Alex wasn't with the team. So 18% uh, only, mm, not too sure. I feel like SK Gaming Prime could easily get this one to uh, get, at least get one win. At least get one win, which of course is not enough. I know. Because it's the best of three, get two. you need two wins. Um, but let's talk about Champion Select here because we're getting closer to the start of the game. Where are the aims going to be here for, for both of these sides? We heard earlier what the Fox has been bringing in a lot of bans in his direction. Yeah, so people like to target towards him. We've seen Syndra being banned a lot against him, which is, of course, a lame bully. If he does get Syndra, he should be able to push Alex around the lane here. But uh, looking on the side of SK Gaming Prime, in the top lane, Smitty, he doesn't actually play Gragas or Maokai. If you just look at like the past games they've played in uh, either the Face It Invitational or the Challenger Series. So, could be an issue if they have to ban both away from Kapushat, who loves to play both of them. He's very good here. Yeah. So, uh, also have to ban Cassidy, and you have to do a Twisted Fate against Alex. I mean, it's going to be very hard for SK Gaming Prime when they are on red side, what they actually want to ban, because they're going to leave something very nice open for NIP. Well, let's have a look. We're into the first game's champion select here, and the first ban's coming out, a Yasuo against SK Prime. Cassidy, of course, was a pretty much a given ban out from the red side, and probably will continue to be exactly that as well. And NIP here, what are they going to go for as their uh, second ban? Could be Syndra against What the Fox. You already targeted him with the Yasuo. Can continue the trend. He is the playmaker on the team, or he's one of the playmakers at least. He's the one everyone talks about, so target towards him, shut him down, get some ganks in from Koo as well, and see if you can actually delay him doing anything in the game. So actually it was Morgana banned out here, so not wanting Zaitan to get his hands on that one. Huh. We also saw Rengar banned by SK Prime against Ko. I'm surprised about the Morgana ban, especially because Zaitan has played Thresh and Braum in the Challenger Series here, in the playoffs at least. But uh, clearly, NIP have scrimmed a team like SK Prime a lot, so they know exactly what to look towards. And the same goes here for SK Gaming Prime. Target Rengar, even though Ku has played Lee Sin, he's played Jarvan, still want to get rid of the Rengar. So they take Syndra out, and we were talking about that. What if Fox has played it? Oh, it's been banned against him most of the time, to be fair. Lee Sin also going to be taken away against Ko. That's a, one of his big time champions. Yes, yeah, so a lot of. Uh, Bans invested onto the jungle here from NIP. Opens up for the Gragas we talked about. There wasn't enough bans to actually get rid of everything here they wanted. So instead of banning Maokai and give Gragas or the other way around, they just say you can take the Gragas. And instant locking a job in here. Both junglers really like to play. They've played a lot in the playoffs as well. And in the challenger scene in Europe, he just has a very high status because of the fact you can always engage fight. And if there's no flash, it's so easy to lock down a target and set up the kill. Yeah, played that Jarvan three times, actually, and they've all been wins for Kikis on that one as well, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, also, Braum picked in. We, you said this is a bit of a weird ban, that yeah. whole Morgana ban, because he has played Braum and Thresh exclusively so far in this uh, Challenger series. Really been his two main supports, but uh, clearly they felt like they had an extra ban and could target towards him. Twisted Fate is still open. Alex has played it here in the, the playoffs of the Coke series and been a very important uh, champion for both teams actually because SK Gaming Prime love to put a lot of focus on ganging for the bottom lane, get a Ziz a, a head down on this bottom side and twist the fade. I don't think you can get a better mid laner for camping the bottom lane. Well, we'll see if that does fall into the hands of either NIP or SK Prime. For now though, it's going to be Evelyn coming out for Co. and we see Freeze getting himself Cogmore. Now, if you look back to some of his previous games, the big one was in the second game of their semi-final against Gamers 2. 12-3-7 was Freezer's score by the end of that game on Cogmore. 
and we know Freeze from, from the past, you especially, of course. He's a player that can go absolutely massive. He's a very aggressive player, especially in the laning phase, which is what teams like to punish. Because again, Twisted Fate or the jungler like Jarvan, you go down to this bottom lane, you expect the NIP bot lane to go in for an aggressive trade, and then you gank them, you get a kill, and you use it to get Dragon, and then you get a goal lead, and that's how it works here. The Evelyn pick, well, the Sin was banned away, Rengar was banned, Jam was picked. Kind of dropping down the list a little bit here, and Evelyn comes in before Elise, actually, for, for NIP. Yeah, interesting choice that with Jarvan going on the other side. We're going to see Oriana actually picked up here for the mid lane for what defaults. And also Corky picked up actually for Z's. Yeah, so uh, he prefers Corky, Ezreal, those champions. He played Lucian before, disabled now, of course, on 4.12. So going with the Corky pick. Good laning phase, good mid game. Will get outskilled by Freeze, however, in the late game points. And NIP here, they could actually. They do go with the Gragas top lane. I was thinking about doing Gragas mid lane for Alex here and then get a Maokai top lane, but would probably have lacked damage if they did. So decided not to do it. Well, they do go with Zillion for Alex Itch Whoa. here for the mid lane. And we'll see Voidal taking Thresh, a champion which, of course, we're very much used to seeing him on. So now they have some peel now from Voidal, even from Kapo Shard if you place the Gragas defensively. And now you have the ulti from Alex onto Freeze in the late game here. So a lot. Pretty much all the damage, late game wise, is going to come from Freeze because both Gragas and Zillion are very good mid game damage, start of late game, but then they slightly fall off when we get some MR items on the side of SK Gaming Prime. Therefore, it's going to be a lot about Freeze in the late game and what damage he can actually do. And then Ku is going to act as the main engage, and then otherwise, you have a hook or the ulti coming in from Kappa Shard. So we see then in response to that rise pick for the top lane for Cabo Shard, Smitty actually picking up Irelia. Done this in the past actually in uh, their second game of the quarter final. Did pick Irelia. Also been playing uh, a bit of Riven into Gragas as well, but Irelia at least for this first game will be his choice. Yeah, so no Maokai, even though it was open here, could have picked it into the Gragas. He prefers these champions where he can, I wouldn't say dominate the lane, but more out of the laning phase, he can make big plays, he can stay in split push. Again, Riven could do it, Aurelia can do it here. So we need to see what SK Gaming or SK Gaming Prime will do. Very important mid-game power spike when you do have Corky and Aurelia. You need to get mm -hmm. your early Trinity Force and then you need to look for fights. Otherwise, going into the late game, it can be hard for them to actually get onto NIP and kill them. Well, now that the players have chosen their champions, who do you guys think has the better comp for this match? Send it to you to at LOLESports with the hashtag NIPWIN or SKPWIN, and we'll check out the results shortly. Of course, it was a big vote for NIP to actually come out on top of this one from lolesports.com. They need to be careful, though. Jarvan with Oriana, put the ball, he jumps in, and you can set up some very easy shockwaves, which is where Alex needs to be fast on his ulti and pick the right target, because if he doesn't use it, on someone like Freeze in the late game, mm. all of a sudden he's open for Jarvan to jump him, for Aurelius to jump him, get the kill, and therefore win the team fight first good game in Prime. Yeah, and we'll see, because Kikis, we've just said it before, he loves to play Jarvan. And a lot of the players that I've talked to around this weekend, when just asked them a little bit about both these teams from their side, had nothing really but praise for Kikis yeah. and how well he's doing. Everyone is saying he joined the team and suddenly they played really well. Uh, Good synergy between the lanes from the start, which is very important, of course, as a jungler when you join a new team. And he's just always looking for these ganks, especially on Java. Well, we are going to be getting into game, of course. It is the first match in this best of three for the Coke Summer Series. And this should be a good one. NIP here. They've had a couple of games here on this stage in our studio in Cologne. None of them have particularly gone their way, though. No, they did win their second Coke series last, last split, yeah. but that's been about it. Failed to qualify twice now to Ready the LCS. To we have to see. Again, they come in as the favorites, but SK Gaming Prime have shown against the bigger teams, they really know how to perform. They have some issues against some of the smaller teams, but when it comes to really going against like NIP, H2K, they know how to play and they know how to play against them. Well, we see SKP right now are all over the ninjas in pajamas jungle. Get in here for a possible early ward. A lot of pings going down towards the blue buff area. And there is the ward going down to figure out if there'll be any lane swaps coming in. NIP put their own ward down just there by the blue buff. And that will spot the entire team. We're uh, trundling their way back towards their own jungle. And it looks like from NIP's standpoint, they're quite happy to just spread around the map. And it seems like everyone just staying in standard lanes. We did see a 
ward on the blue buff from NIP to actually see if SK Prime went back to this blue buff here to take it. There's still a lot of time before it spawns. And the dual lane from NIP is actually staying around. Just to see what's going on here. We did see Flask from uh, Smitty up in the top lane, which is what we actually normally see on Aurelia, especially against Gragas, because you will take a lot of poke damage in the start, and you just want to sustain. So, let's have a look at the jungle starts here. SK Prime going to be starting off with their own red buff. They got a lot of vision down into NIP's jungle. And we see that Ko will be starting off with his blue buff. Got Cabochard there to give him a helping hand. And that will be taken away here without too many problems. Also means that we're going to get that heads up 2v2 lane in the bottom with Cogmore Thresh against Corky Brown. So standard lanes I really want to see what Kiki is going to do on Jarman here early. We did see uh, the very last LCS game, Sven's going to at least. He put a lot of effort on trying to counter Jungle and Evelyn. It's going to be hard for Kikis to do the same. He doesn't really have the same amount of burst when it comes to this early game fight here. He's still a very good jungle early game on Jarvan. But uh, not really the same amount as in at least when it comes to very early fights. So we have to see what's going to happen. Of course, it depends on which jungle you actually ask. Because some of the junglers here in Europe are like Jarvan can duel everyone in the early game. For now though, everyone is sticking to standard lanes. Alex looking to be aggressive in here. And we see Alex, you know, a return to the studio here in Cologne. And always great to see such a legend play. And we'll see if he can guide the ninjas in pajamas into that promotion tournament. Still a bit of work to be done on that front though. Starting here with his first game of the best of three. As Kikis does finally finish off his blue. And we get into things. Properly. Top lane, of course, will be Gragas versus Irelia, and Kabashar actually doing a good bit of damage onto Smitty at the start. Yeah, he needs to dominate the lane here early on, constantly pushing into the tower, trying to deny CS from Smitty. And also opens up if Koden actually wants to go into the SK Prime jungle, because at the moment, NIP is pushing both lanes. I see what the Fox already taking a bit of harassment from Alex. It's just speeding himself up in there. Get the bomb down. Just let that damage tick away. A lot of command protect, I think, going to be used by Waterfox in these early stages to try and shield as much of that bomb damage as he possibly can. Look at his top lane. Early advantage in CS really going over to Cabochard. And we know that he is a big Gragas player. Decided not to ban it this time. And, of course, first picked by NIP in this first match. And we do see the aggressive invade. We just talked about how NIP had pushed up the side lanes or the solo lanes. So Ku can now move in and look for the fight here. Ku or Ko? I'm not actually 100% sure. Well, there's a hook there. Either way, on towards the Zaitan. Actually managing to get the Unbreakable down and stop too much damage coming over there. And Voidland Freeze. I think there's a lot of, not pressure on them, but a lot of uh, anticipation to see this uh, duo lane in action and exactly how they're going to match up to Z's and Zaitan. Kabashad there we did see though getting stunned underneath Smitty's tower which caused him a little bit more danger than he would have probably wanted at this stage of the game. The early game, escape prime. Pushing up the bot lane, they have control, they're farming well. Need to be careful to avoid like he wanted to go for a fight here. Ko once again sitting up in his top lane. He was spotted before. We're still staying and going in. Or going in and they're going to force a very early flash there out of Smitty. As soon as he showed himself, Ko decides to get out. And we saw there the vote as well. 85% of you thinking that NIP going to win this one. So actually that vote going further in their direction. Meanwhile, Kick is coming towards this mid lane. Going to try and get it on towards Alex. There's the knockup. Have they got the damage to finish off? He's going to try and speed Make away. Flash, flash. Flashes. Are they going to go in? Kick is going to go aggressive. It only needs one more hit and does pick up the first blood. It's Alex Hitch that goes down. Very nice setup here in the early games from Kick as we talk about. He's very good on Jarvan here. And Alex had just constantly pushed the lane up. It was a very easy setup here. They saw Ko up in the top lane and knew he wasn't there to counter gank and went in for it. Did have to flash both what the Fox and Kick is, but still got the first blood. First blood going their way in a slight gold lead, 800 goldage. Supposed not to be laughed at really, five minutes, 45 seconds into the game. We see Cabochard actually has just TP'd back into his top lane after Smitty did that previously. Triple Doran's ring start for Cabochard, so really trying to bully this lane. Yeah, full focus on the, the lane here. Don't expect him to go Rod of Ages. Now he's building Triple Thorns, would delay it a lot at least. Normally you would go Rod of Ages as early as possible. So he could just be looking to go straight into a death cap if he's looking for like a mid-game AP spike. But uh, 
Let's see what he actually builds. Athenes wouldn't really help him against an Irelia. More real Normicon would, however. May be an option. We'll have to find out once he uh, does go back. We'll see those triple dawns. Should be enough to keep him in lane for quite a while on that top side. Meanwhile, this mid lane after that first blood came in for Kikis means that Alex falling slightly behind there in CS has come back into lane with a chalice and actually what the Fox did go back home as well after that kill came in so didn't impact the CS too much as we we're expecting um, Oriana doing a good job in this early game farm yeah now he can start taking the Wraith camp which is very hard for Alex to do the same he's gonna at least take more damage and can take it as fast and now Voidle <laughs> just stopping the recall yeah, he's getting hooked in, obviously. No real follow-up to that one. Freeze was uh, quite happily just farming the lane behind him, and the lantern was used for vision, so didn't have that available to them to get in. We do, however, see Ko moving up now towards that red buff. Smitty actually taking a lot of damage, and there's the ulti to knock him back. No flash, don't forget. Is Kavashog going to go for it? Not sure. Kick is actually being found in the jungle here as well. He's also got no flash after that first blood, and he's going down here. Ko picking up the kill, stalking him through the jungle. Oh, right. Alexic is actually not going to be picked off there. He had his ultimate running on himself, so would have come back to life. What the Fox decides not to finish him. But again, the very same deal here for NIP. They want to push up the lanes. Just look at the top lane here. Kapusha was standing between the two towers, trying to get a kill on Smithy. And it opens up for Ku to just invade in or call to move in and just look for Kikis here. He's going for what the Fox has. No flash. This is a little bit risky. There's a bomb on him now, and he's going to try and run away. Oh, but he was going to nice. steal it there with a the box. Meanwhile, down on the bottom lane, we actually saw a kill coming in for Freeze as well. So. High kill game so far, 3-2 to two for the ninjas in pajamas. A lot of action here, both supports going down the bottom lane. Freeze, they get the kill. So very nice, both of the cows can actually stay and farm in the lane here. And we just saw all about Evelyn invading into SK Prime. Kill Kikis opens up for the mid lane gang all of a sudden where Kapo Shop was roaming down as well. And there was no flash for what the Fox used it earlier when they actually got the first spot on to, uh, to Alex. And now Kikis needs to be careful again. Oh, half HP actually going to go in. He's got Freezer's help this time. The two of them should be able to finish off Kikis. There's a Cataclysm coming down. Ko's gone away from it. And Freeze picked up the kill. It was risky, but it worked out for NIP. So Kikis went in. He used the Q on to the red buff to actually pull it so he couldn't get away. We're just going to see the fight though. Down his bottom lane. Voidal engage on. Saitan gets the hook. All the damage onto both supports while flashing after him. And now it's just about both AD carries cleaning up the kills. And then they can happily go back to form. Flashed in there, did Voidal, which very put, aggressive flash. put him in a bit of a dangerous position trying to get behind uh, that of Zaitan and leaves us now at 4 2, but probably more importantly, two kills for Freeze. It's given him the Phage, given him the Sheen already here in that laning phase. He's actually not been back up until now. We'll do that now. We'll see what he comes back into lane with. Meanwhile, Blue Buff's been given over. Alex Hitch with his bombs will secure that. But really, so. Such an aggressive play by Kikis. The fact he even pulls the Red Bull with his Q so he can't jump over the Dragon Ball now. He had to wait for the cooldown, and therefore he was stuck and just had to try and kill Ko once he actually went on to him. The Lantern from Voidal, I believed, saved him with the very last Q from Kikis actually hit him. So, uh, aggressive play, completely backfired. Second kill for Freezon. Looking good for him. It's going Again, we talk about how it's going to be all about him in the late game and his damage. Well, we see that Kavashard is coming back with a TP to the top lane, and he is going for a Rod of Ages. Okay, uh, I'm not really a fan of Triple Thorns and the Rod of Ages, simply because you delayed for such a long time. I mean, he's going to get it like 16, 17 minutes, unless NAB can pick up a lot of gold here. But he just wanted the Triple Thorns to try and dominate the lane. We did actually see almost picked up a kill on Smitty, so... In that case, I guess it paid off a little bit. Oh, blue buff gonna be taken. Uh, sorry, the uh, dragon goes to the blue team to NIP. Here comes the ball. Shockwave gonna get two of them though. And surely this is bad news for NIP. Ko's got the ultimate. Oh, Zaitan actually going low. Bomb will finish him off. Voidal goes down as well. Kick is really low in there. They do manage to take him. But now Freeze all alone will be finished off as well by Z's. And that is a three for two. Such a nice team fight here by SK Gaming Prime. They go straight in there. NIP is caught four members in the dragon can bet you against an Oriana with a shockwave. None of the top laners joined. They're going at it again. Yeah, but Smitty might be in trouble. The slow coming down. That's a good stun onto Cabo Shard. Has he got one more barrel to come out? Whoa. Is he going to land it? He is, potion. but it's not enough damage. Potion ticking away. Keeps Smitty alive. Was, of course, a 4 for 2 down at the Dragon. 
freeze there with his Ikathian surprise. Surprising end, yeah. me. Surprising you again. Candy Panda, yes, again, but it's a yeah. triple kill. But still, let's just see the fight. Four members from NRP caught in the Dragon Pit, and you have a shockwave from Water Fox. It's onto Alex and Co. They get very low and sees in the background. He's just standing on Corgi and hammering away all their E damage. Kick is joined in. Yes, okay, you lose your support. Who cares at this point? It's just about cleaning off the kills. And at the very end, two versus one, freeze goes down as well. Nice team fight by SK Gaming Prime. Four for two, and he actually brings the kills back even at six apiece. Gold is, albeit, well, pretty even, 18.2 per piece. SK Prime maybe got a slight advantage on that front, but for all intents and purposes, this game is level at this stage. If you look down the items, there for What the Fox, who got a lot of assists in that last little battle. Themes is done for him, got a blasting wand in there as well now. And Alex is going to build a very cool armor reduction and mana based build. Well, you have your tier early, you stack it, you get a Fiends, and you also cool them reduction on your boots. Simply to late game or mid game, get as many ultis off as possible, get as many bombs off as possible, but doesn't get the maximum damage on the bomb. Okay, he's actually going to be caught out here again by Ko, but we have what the fox coming around. There's a Cataclysm use. Kick is in the middle of them. Alex has got the ult on himself. Ko is going to go down. Alex Hitch is going to come back up, but will he get away? He flashes. Another what one. the fox follows, and with the auto attack, picks himself up a double. And it's such a good setup when you have Jarvan. Just give him the ball, let him jump in. He dunks onto NIP, and you get a beautiful shockwave here from what the fox picking up two kills once again. And it's all the right members from SK Prime getting the kills. 3-1 for Oriana, 2-0-3 on Corky. Couple of kills for Jarvan as well out of the jungle. Looking good here for SK Prime. Bottom lane for NIP since those kills for Free's been a little quieter. Free sat at 3-3-1, uh, sorry, 3-1-1 himself, if I could actually read. And let's have another look at that one. Again, Kick is in a little caught out at first, but he's got the ball on. Cataclysm makes it easy. Such a good setup here. Alex actually delayed his flash because of his own ulti. It meant, however, Cole didn't have an ulti. He goes down after this one. And Smitty actually roaming down before Kappa shot. Being part of the fight, make sure you get two kills for SK Prime and only one for NIP. Well, Kick is certainly doing the work here. He's part of seven of the eight kills that SK Prime currently have under their belt. Doing a fantastic job with Look at that. the farm. Yeah. 126 to 86 in the mid lane, 127 to 100 in the bottom lane, top lane, and a little bit in the jungle, the only ones behind, but not by massive amounts. Certainly made up in the other lanes. Definitely here, looking very good in the bottom lane. And it's the thing about SK Prime. They need to win the bottom lane. If they do, however, they suddenly look very strong, but we have seen games in the Challenger series or in other Tournaments, online tournaments where if they lose the bottom lane, if there's a lot of focus on the enemy jungler, SK Prime as a team often end up losing the entire game because they don't feel like they have the team fight present now to actually make plays. This time around though, he's looking very good. Early Trinity Force already. Freeze didn't complete his yet. So already a power spike now for Zs. And it actually was looking pretty good for NIP, that bottom lane as well. All until that last woeful fight where Zs were just well, tearing through them at the back, not having any problems as Kiki's gonna catch Ko, and there is a Cataclysm straight away. Ko forced the flash, they're gonna dive on him. Ko's not getting away from this one. Even the TP from Smitty comes down. Maybe a little bit overkill there with the TP, but that might get them a tower if nothing else. Yeah, so up in this top lane here, Kapusha can push it in. The tower is already very low, so would probably have gone down soon anyhow. Smitty actually recalled, didn't want to stay in this bottom lane to take it. They can just do it with Kikis. In up his bot lane is forced away. Tower for SK Prime and a kill. Traded for the top tower. And a possible dragon. I mean, he's still got a minute time on it till it actually uh, spawns back into the map. But we do see that tower trade off at this point. And one tower apiece coming in. Meanwhile, Alex Hitch getting his ultimate pop right underneath his own tower. What the Fox actually taking some good damage. The bomb will explode, doing a good chunk as well, but not enough to get the kill. Alex Hitch is ulti now on cooldown. And what the Fox has really been doing a good job constantly farming the jungle camps. Whenever Kikis was part of a fight, he would just go into the jungle instead of Oriana, take the farm, push his own lane, and very far ahead compared to Alex. Some of it is a small race. We have to remember only five gold, but still, it all counts. And I love the way Kikis plays Javan. No reason to try and land your QE combo, your flag and drag. Just instant all onto the target, force the flash, and then you use it after. Good job so far. Two, four, six is the scoreline for him. Meanwhile, bottom lanes have gone back. 
See a BF sword and boots added in for Z's just in time for this next dragon. And well, Freeze himself is recalling, he's gonna get it's a Trinity Force, but the dragon spawns at exactly that time. And this is an easy one for SK Prime. Yeah, so I don't think actually NRP wanted to try and fight because Alex had used the ulti in mid lane. He has no flash at the same time. Open the or at the same time, NRP have been losing the last few fights we have seen. So uh, if they actually wanted to contest the dragon, it was very poor timing on the recalls, especially from the bottom lane of NRP. But uh, SK Prime with the goal lead and the dragon also a timer. Voidal just warded it now, so now they can like time it and they're gonna be a few seconds off. Oh, Kiki's again coming around to this middle lane. Oh, Shockwave! Alex is walking into all the damage there. He did have his ultimate available, but Look here, that two caught members. me out. That caught SK Prime. Uh, that caught NIP out as well. I don't know what that sentence actually was supposed to mean. Not sure. Show, but I know what I meant in my head somewhere. And that tower is actually really, really low as well. So someone needs to come cover it. Actually, Z's and Titan have both come up to the mid lane as well. Cone needs to defend. And look at the jungle here. The NIP's jungle is completely warded as long as you move from the bottom lane straight to the mid lane. We don't have any deep wards, but still they can see everything if NIP wants to move from the lanes here. They need a pink ward, however, for Ko. But still just a good rotation from the bottom lane, push it out, they got the tower earlier. Move straight to mid lane, the tower was already low. Take it, Alexis was forced away from the tower. And just a nice setup, BSK Prime, playing really well. Just need to be careful, because there's still a lot of damage on the side of NRP in this mid game, especially with Vazillion, even though Alex is uh, not building Death Cap as the first one, but more going for the utility-based build. So we also see... The Rod of Ages was finished. You said 16 minutes. He got it for actually 15 seconds earlier than that. 15.45. He picks up his Rod of Ages to get that one charging up. See how much power that Gragas is going to have if and when the next team fight does break out. Irelia will also be getting Trinity Force picked up soon enough. 133 CS there. And actually, they're going to go in here. What did Fox force to flash away? Barrel coming out there. And, well, actually he didn't use it. Kalashar didn't get to use his ultimate there. That was just a really quick flash from What the Fox. Yeah, Ko did use his ulti over. Managed to actually flank around him, get it, and just force What the Fox to flash away. And SK Prime now. The top tower is still alive, with a lot of health. So instead they're actually looking towards his mid lane again. Pushing it down, the three members. Kick is joining in now. And NIP at the moment has no ulti on Ko, so he won't be able to engage the fight. There's a lot of wards, but it's from NIP at the moment. At least when you look at the pink wards. SK Prime, however, just pushing onto this tower. Alex is very low. Yeah, he's got to go back. He does have ultimate, but he might have to stay around just for this one because of the pressure that they're actually putting in there. Voidal gets blasted by what the Fox, and he's shown us already that he's not a player that waits to pull the trigger on the nope. shockwave. If he thinks that he can burst you down, he's going to go for it. And it's also just about forcing them away from the tower, not necessarily killing them, but just force them away from the tower. Saitan moving in here. Go. Did get the red buff. Oh, so might be in trouble. Slow actually landing on team ultimate. We'll get the knockup as well. Co is going to go very, very low. Finish off. He got Alex's ultimate though. Will he be able to get through and survive this one? The focus is all over the place. There's Cataclysm actually coming down. Alex going low. Freeze has been hammered on by Spitty, but they get him killed there. And at the moment, it's a two for one in favor of SK Prime. They're happy with that. So the ultimate was used very early by Alex onto Co here to make sure he can get back in the fight. And then Capo shot joined in, but it was already five members from SK Prime, they were part of it from the start, managed to get a kill here, Smitty just went straight for Freeze in the back line, killed Ko in the meanwhile, we're just gonna see it again here, he's gonna be the first target, nice setup here by Saitana actually, getting the stun as well, getting the knock up, everything, Ulti used by Alex, and now Kapuch should start teleporting, it's already a bit late, so she joined the fight, Freeze is completely out of mana, NFP doesn't have to take this fight, they can sacrifice Ko and just say, you know what, you get a kill, and yet, they can go in here, Freeze does manage to get a kill, we're still trading two for one, and uh, Risky team fight by NIP, also because Alex had to use the ulti from the start, so he didn't actually have it in the real fight. The gold remains similar to what it was before that here. Just over 3,000. What if Fox getting himself a blue buff? He's also got a Ravadon's death cap, of course, now in there as well. So a lot of damage to come out of him. Currently, NIP just trying to put a bit of pressure onto that middle turret. They've lost the mid turret of their own, of course, so 
to uh, actually fall back as they see a lot of players from SK Prime starting to come around. We've got a minute and a half till the next Dragon comes in. Let's not forget the last one going over to SK Prime. First one was actually picked up by NIP. So we'll see how this next one goes and whether after that little uh, fight again, whether NIP even want to challenge for it. SK Prime is definitely not done fighting. They really use this mid-game power spike on Corky after you get the Trinity Force and now into Infintage. Also, Trinity Force completed on Aurelia. So SK Prime is very, very strong at this point, and they're using it to constantly move in into the jungle of NIP. Hope they're actually gonna fight them. Take it, win the fight here. Dragon, oh, very soon NIP going for the tower. Oh, what the fuck? Moving Blue forward there, I saw the kick his mind just go running out and slam down with a cataclysm as he's done time and time again so far this game. They do however get that outer turret in the top lane though, but now they've got to defend here. NMP with a full five-man team trying to get in onto that middle outer turret. Irelia could TP in if needed. Just bought home guard here, so could actually teleport behind and start a fight. For now, everyone backs away from the tower. Everyone takes it easy. All about the dragon now. 22 seconds. Just a few wards from NIP. SK Prime needs to get in the river here. Clear them out, get their own wards down if they want to look for and engage. Cork is nowhere to be seen though. He's actually went home, finished off an Infinity Edge. If you can get there to this fight, he can. it's going to be so, so strong. And actually, looks like he will get in. Only five seconds now until that dragon comes up. SK Prime getting ready to come in as they dodge the ultimate. There is Kikis once again. He's going to get in the middle of it. It's a two-man shockwave. Where's the rest of the damage coming in? Smitty on towards Ko in the back there. He's got Alex as ulti, so he'll come back up. But the rest of the team, one by one, being picked off here. Ko's going to go down as well. And that right there is a whitewash team fight. They only lost Kikis. They get the dragon as well. Four for one with the dragon. Big win for SK Prime. And just, we see the engage again. Ball on to Kegis, he jumps an instant shockwave from What the Fox, and then all the AoE damage from SK Prime at this moment here. And Vintage was completed by Seas just before the fight started. It was a big deal, because there was no blade on the side of Freeze, so he was an item behind. And there was just so much damage on SK Prime's side. The Corky Pigs really working out together with the combination of Jarvan and Oriana together. It's going to be difficult, you have to feel for NIP to get back into this one. And again, let's start that one off with Kiki's diving in again. So notice he actually only hits Bordel and Co with the Shockwave, but it doesn't matter because they just want to start the fight and then go in. Sees in the background. Who's going to touch him? Nobody. He just sits there, spams away, freezes caught in the middle, easy target. Ulti from Alex is already used. And there's nobody from NIP who can dive the back line unless they flank around with both Gragas and Evelyn, which means Corgi in every single team fight just sits back and destroys NIP. And we saw that Kikis once again actually locked up both Alex and Freeze at the back. And whilst you might say they didn't damage them while they were stuck in there, he stopped them from being able to run away. And then they could switch over and kill off Freeze as well after they were done killing off the rest of the team in the front of them. So that leaves SK Prime here. <laughs> Closing in on a 10,000 gold lead, 59 up in kills for one in turrets as well. This is looking like game number one possibly could be going their way. And we had what, 85% or was it 88% voting for NIP? Still, there's more games to come, it's not just the first game here, but definitely in favor of SK Prime. They've been looking very good, picking the right fights, had a good comp to fight as well in this mid game. And I'm starting to burn. Freeze and Co are very far away. Smitty gonna be at the front of this one. Actually, he's gonna go straight for Alex, ult. who gets his bomb in there. Actually, he's got his ulti on himself. That gets popped. Can they finish him off? What the fox is actually pretty low. They do manage to get himself burned. And IP actually doing a bit of a fight here. Well, they lose the first man. Smitty's gonna go down. They'll focus Boydle next. Freeze is still alive at the front. They need to get on him because Freeze is doing a lot of damage. Currently a two for two here. What the fox? And the rest of the team, I think, are going to try and back off. So two for two here, SK Prime. Some of the members went away from the Baron. Oh, Kick is not done. Oh, he messed up that shockwave, though. Almost in range of Alex and Boydle. Kick is, is he going to keep going? Freezes off in the middle lane there as well. Good try, almost working out, but not quite in range. Oh, oh it's going to be caught out. I'm not sure really what he's trying to do with this he's one. He's got his ultimate again. That's why he's gone back in. But is it going to be enough? Boydle, also a little bit alone now, tries for the hook, doesn't get it. They are not done fighting, man. Constant back and forth here. NAP went in, SK Prime, some of the members disengaged from the Baron. We're just going to see there. Smithy staying out, going for Alex. Want to force the ulti as fast as possible. And if Alex uses it on himself, it now opens up for SK Prime to just pick whatever target they want. Ko is going to be the first guy. He's gone. 
Freeze in this background, however, he's just left alone. So now, tables turn. The AD carry from NIP is left alone, and he's doing all the damage, and therefore they can actually trade two for two. The last bomb from uh, Alex also taking down Z's. Baron going that way, though, and that allows the 10,000 gold lead to be reached for SK Prime. If you look where the kills are going, what the fuck? 6 1 10 currently with that Oriana. 5 1 8 Corky as well. Similar scenario on the other side though. 5 2 3 for Freeze. 5 4 3 for Alex Itch. Got himself that Zerus Embrace now. Or the Archangel as it is for now because it's not fully stacked and up just no yet. And no longer. Just stacked it up. And now it is. Yeah. Good now timing. We'll have the shield. But it's been all about the towers for SK Prime, the dragons as well, to get all the global gold. Against NP picked the Baron before. And the Gragas pick up in the top lane. We talked about how Kapushar loves to play Gragas. It's not been working at all. He has zero impact in these team fights. Rod of Ages came in a bit late. Has to sell the Dorns now. Kept that tree's uh, health potion. Should probably sell it and get a few wards. But he's not been able to have the same impact as Smitty in these uh, team fights. Because Smitty just throws himself into NIP every single time. And uh, Alex really uh, looking at their issue and saying, I need to I snowball. Need a soul stealer. I need a soul stealer. So NIP needs to pick up some kills in the next team fight. Otherwise, the soul stealer is going to be completely useless. Well, a snowball item when you're a good 10k gold behind. All or nothing, man. All or nothing, indeed. We'll see if Alex can pull this one off. SK Prime starting to close in onto this inhibitor turret. Baron, of course, is still running on a few of their players. I think the two that went down just, well, obviously they don't have Baron anymore. One of which is Z's. Well, they're just going to go straight down towards this bottom lane. They've got mid already pushing in their way. You can see that Smitty's gone to the top lane as well. So, going to try and force all three lanes in there and then switch around for them, and see if they can find an opening to actually get in there get one of these in him turrets. There they go, stepping up to it. We've got Freeze actually clearing out the mid lane. And they back away. There's a dragon in 40 seconds. Obviously a massive gold lead here for SK Prime, but any extra bit of gold you can find is always nice as well. Always help. I mean, we're only 20 mi 28 minutes into the game. You have still a lot of items to go. And seems like we're going to get a Bloodfurster for Corky here and Renan's Omen for Aurelia in the top lane. So a lot of items from SK Prime at the moment almost completed. Just need a bit more gold, they can go back, finish all the items and hit another spike and then go look for the fight. Rainier and Zoman just completed now. So Kavashar trying to get rid of this top wave. Not really got much in terms of items as he's out of ages. Sheen is done for him, but not exactly masses of damage or tankiness to come out from the top lane when you compare that with an Aurelia who's got 24 and Randuin's. Well, I guess the point is that you can't really compare that one. There's another Dragon for SK Prime. Zs is going back and he's got a lot of gold to spend as well. Should be the Bloodfurster. Uses our actually. Couldn't buy it just yet. Got the BF sword at least. So, uh, just trying to expand his lead or extend his lead over Freeze. Who's actually going to build defensive now because he's been the target for SK Prime in these fights and because there's so much AoE magic damage with the rockets from uh, Corgi, you have the ulti or the damage from What the Fox on Oriana. So a lot of uh, magic damage here going on towards the side of NMP and uh, all the members should be looking to get some magic resist. So what's the next step here then for SK Prime? Those waves that they'd spent a couple of minutes pushing in have now been pushed all the way back out once again. By NIP. We've got one minute and 50 until the Baron comes up. It might just be a case of once again pushing those lanes in and waiting for Baron to come up. And do the exact same thing they did before here. Oh, he's in trouble. Oh, they caught him, but he just Valkyrie straight out of there. We'll see if they can hold on to this inner turret now. They know the danger of if what the fox gets his ball behind the tower, staying in there is a difficult decision. Alex is gonna go down, didn't even use his ulti on himself. That's not gonna stack, stack his soul stealer. And Co is gonna fall as well inside of the cataclysm. And just like that, two kills and another tower. And thank you so much, SK Prime, for showing how to play with the lead and a strong mid game comp. There's no waiting around here, just go straight for the dive. Alex was caught out of position. He went down very fast, didn't even ult himself. He couldn't have, he didn't have time oh. to do it. And once again, going in, there's no waiting here. Just go, let's get these kills. We are ahead and it's looking good. 
That's what I said earlier, what the Fox, not a guy who messes around with pressing R. It's only a couple of times now coming in at such speed that whoever it lands on, not really ready for it. There's the Enim turret, the inhibitor itself is going to go down. Maybe not more, actually, Hick is going in there trying to get on to freeze. And yeah, Antoon <laughs> flashing in there to try and get him as well. Very ballsy play from Kiki so I'm not far. sure if you wanted to try and do the old flag and dragon and you flash and you get the knock up anyway, but the uh, rest of SK Prime couldn't really follow him. There was no shockwave from the Fox. There is, however, a Baron very soon, but let's just get a replay. Alex, he's actually trying to wave clear, but because his range is so short and SK Prime is standing right in front of him, it's very easy to take him down and then just go straight for the dive onto Ko here. He should be an easy target. Locked in by Kikis. Then Voidle, of course, dies later on. But SK Prime, not waiting around. Get the tower, get the kills. Now I'm gonna go home, spend another load of cash, which gives the Zonya's Hourglass, for example, over to Ariana. Corky now has his Bloodthirster done, and Baron has now spawned in as well. So SK Prime in perfect position to be going into that one. Just as an aside note here, the, uh, the average game time for both of these teams. SK Prime's considerably lower at an average 32 minutes, which is where we are right now. NIP's, however, 43 minutes. But it's what we see actually with the playstyle from SK Prime. Once they have the lead, they just keep going forward. Yeah. They keep looking for the fight, so they want to close out the game as fast as possible. It's not going to be 32 minutes this time around, but they're still looking very, very good. If they manage to bait NIP into a fight here, should be able to win it and then go straight for the base. Well, it really is not there right now. Teleport is available for Smitty, though, as it is for cover shots. Is and what the Fox actually starting off the Baron here, so NIP gonna have to come in from around the side. That Baron going down very, very quickly. Gonna be finished off before NIP can even do anything. There's oh, the out. Get the knock up on towards Boyle. He's gonna get stunned here in a second as well. That'll mean the finisher and kick is with a massive cataclysm. That means they can pick off Ko as well. And that's three men down. Alex is dead again without using his ultimate. Just get instantly popped every single time. SK Prime, they have so much damage and they play this game so well. They're gonna get the win. Yeah, they're gonna finish it off right here. Nexus turrets will be focused. Only Freeze and Cabo Shard are left alive. Cabo Shard was actually pushing up the mid lane. Tries to TP off onto the Nexus turret. Doesn't matter either way. Wadi Fox throws out one last celebratory shockwave and SK Prime pick up game one. A massive difference in the junglers and top laners in this game here. Kingis was the guy to start every single fight. Ko was the guy to die in every single fight here. And SK Prime, because they had Kog for the mid game here, because they had Aurelia with the Trinity Force for the mid game power spike as well, they got the fights they wanted. They could always engage with Kikis. And there was nothing NIP could do to kill Z's in the background on Corky. So he just st stood there and destroyed them, slapped them, man. And just to point out Kikis' performance there. 2 5 17 he finished at the end. It was part of 19 out of 23 kills yeah. during that game. Just goes to show, and he wasn't messing around, was he? Jumped straight in there, flashed for the knockouts, yeah. jumped straight on people with Cataclysm. Really efficient killing machine. Just love the way they actually played because we often see with teams. We have the lead, let's just take it easy. We're not going to take any chances here. We're not going to try and lose the game now we already have the lead. SK Prime is just forward. Like, Kig is every time there's a chance, he will jump you, will dunk you in the face, and the rest of the team will just join in and destroy you. Okay, maybe his last flash was a bit over aggressive, but still, it all counts. So, we, if we go all the way back to the bands, the Morgana one that we were scratching our heads about, that should have been a Jarvan ban. I agree, and probably will be for the next game. I'm not sure if SK Prime wants to first pick Jarvan, but again, looking at the fact they don't play Gragas or Maokai in the top lane, that's not going to be first pick. They don't have to mm. first pick an Irelia, they can save it. Opens up for Jarvan to be a first pick. There's nothing else they could actually take. We saw Aziz both playing Ezreal and Corgi. So he also has two options, and only two options. Not a lot for the AD carries here. But I wonder if NRP want to look towards the picks in this game here from, uh, from SK Prime, or if they want to say, it was our mistake, we played it wrong. We can give you the same picks, and this time around we'll be more careful. We'll not get caught out in the mid game and lose the fights. Depends on how they think. And Alex Hitch as well, playing Zillion all well and good. A lot of ultimates in there saving people left and right. Most of them were killed straight away afterwards as well. But for me, the, the great Alex Hitch is someone who can carry games completely yeah. for his team. And I'm not sure that Zillion is that champion. No, and the issue for Zillion as well is if he falls behind or if the team falls behind, 
Your ulti does nothing other than delay whoever you actually used it on from dying. So what we saw in every single fight was once the engage came in, NAP was already trying to run away, and whoever was actually the guy being caught out, yes, he got the ulti from Alex, but you're already behind. You can't really win the fight, and therefore mm. he had no impact. When you do play Zillion, you have to get ahead in the early mid game. Otherwise, you don't really have an impact. You might as well play him support then, in that case, if you're just doing it for the ulti. Well, a massive victory there for SK Gaming Prime in game number one. It is a best of three, though, so don't go anywhere. We're going to first go over to Shox for some analysis after that match. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm here again with Lee Demon Smith and Trevor. Quick shot, Henry, to break down that win from SK Gaming Prime over NIP. Very convincing. And guys, how much of that stemmed from wrong champion select by NIP? Well, I, I think wrong champion select is definitely something you have to consider. You know, Joe and DeFisher were talking about the Morgana ban. It's a little obscure because it's not something that uh, Zitan has been running a lot in the past. He locked Brahm in super early and it worked in their favor. On the same token, Kikus has been very dominant on Jarvan. We know Ko has played Jarvan in the past. Elise was open and he picked Eve, which he's got a losing record with. We've got a challenger caster upstairs, Lucy, who's been talking to us about all the games that uh, he's had a, the, the pleasure of watching, and Lucy was just not impressed with Ko's picks. And the same token, Alex, one of the most gifted mechanical players on Zillion, a not necessarily playmaking champion. I'm not completely sold. No, absolutely, and if you were to look at SK Prime's team comp at the start, they had a very clear goal. Kikis was going to go in, Rally was going to dive in on top of them, and the shockwave would work. Worked out, I would say, probably 80% of the time. There was a few whiffs where basically Kikis went too far <laughs> ahead of them and completely outrun them. But overall, you know, SK Prime wanted a fight throughout that game, and every fight was chosen on their own way. Like, at no point did NIP go into that saying, we want to fight. It was a case of, holy hell, they're coming at us again. Yeah, let's actually take a look at one of those fights uh, around the Dragon Pit. Let's get that up on the screen. It's actually a moment that SK Prime is already pretty far ahead. Yeah, so at this point in time, you can already see that there's a sizable gold lead in favor of SK Gaming Prime. Uh, they initiate on Ninjas in Pajamas, and despite losing Kickers early, he's done the right job. Got the Cataclysm down, delivered a strong Shockwave, and it's just cleanup crew from SK Prime. They rolled over NIP. That was the team fight that absolutely solidified the lead, but up until that point, it had been skirmishes and skirmishes, which SK Prime just kept clawing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. From there, it was downhill. Alex bought a Soul Stealer out of desperation, hoping to get stacks. It was too little too late. You watched yeah. the Alliance too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was never going to work, and it even showed towards the end uh, to the point that Alex wasn't even able to click his ultimate on himself quick enough because he was just getting dumped that quick. Okay, controversial thought. Game one of the series, Ninjas and Pazamas are struggling in another Challenger Series final. I certainly haven't heard that before. No, absolutely. That is something to worry about for them. So, guys, um, will it be mediated by the picks, do you think? Can NIP pull it back in? Jarvan has to be taken off the table or picked early. I think Kickers had a very strong showing on that champion. I would dare say Leeson and Elise also have to be considerations. They are similar, aggressive, early game champions. And if Kickers can have that sort of level, that sort of... Uh, impact, this might be a 2-0. You know, Kikis only recently joined SK Prime once Broken Shard left, and SK Prime seemed to be going through the roof in terms of uh, performance and ability. Yeah, I mean, NIP coming into this one's the number one seed. Everybody's touting them as the number one seed for Challenger, hoping that maybe we're going to see this NIP gambit. The question is, are they? At the moment, it doesn't look like it. No, oh, absolutely not. We have to take a quick break, but when we return, it is game two between SK Gaming Prime and Ninjas in Pajamas. We'll be right back. What's up with my balls? Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. To have uh, wonderful Christ. matches that we can win. Goes the blue team to NIP. Here comes the ball. Shockwave's going to get two of them, though. And surely this is bad news for NIP. Ko's got the ultimate. Zayatan actually going low. Bomb will finish him off. Voidal goes down as well. He's going to get in the middle of him. It's a two-man shockwave. Where's the rest of the damage coming in? Smitty on towards Ko in the back there. He's got Alex as ulti, so he'll come back up. But the rest of the team, one by one, being picked off here. Ko's going to go down as well. He's going to get stunned here in a second as well. That'll mean the finisher and Kikis with a massive cataclysm. That means they can pick up Ko as well. 